Section 4, Explaining the Paradox Theoretically Certain theoreticians accept that the apparent absence of evidence proves the absence of extraterrestrials and attempt to explain why. Others offer possible frameworks in which the silence may be explained without ruling out the possibility of such life, including assumptions about extraterrestrial behavior and technology. Each of these hypothesized explanations is essentially an argument for decreasing the value of one or more of the terms in the Drake equation. The arguments are not, in general, mutually exclusive. For example, it could be that both life is rare and technical civilizations tend to destroy themselves, or many other combinations of the explanations below. Section 4.1 No Other Civilizations Currently Exist one explanation is that the human civilization is alone in the galaxy. Several theories along these lines have been proposed explaining why intelligent life might be either very rare or very short-lived. Implications of these hypotheses are examined as the great filter. Section 4.1.1 .1. No other civilizations have arisen. Detailed information about this section can be found in the Wikipedia main article titled Rare Earth Hypothesis. Those who believe that extraterrestrial intelligent life does not exist argue that the conditions needed for life, or at least complex life, to evolve are rare or even unique to Earth. This is known as the Rare Earth Hypothesis, which attempts to resolve the Fermi Paradox by rejecting the mediocrity principle and asserting that Earth is not typical, but unusual or even unique. While a unique Earth has had historical support on philosophical or religious grounds, the Rare Earth Hypothesis uses quantifiable and statistical arguments to argue that multicellular life is exceedingly rare in the universe because Earth-like planets are themselves exceedingly rare and or many improbable coincidences have converged to make complex life on Earth possible. While some have pointed out that complex life may evolve through other mechanisms than those found specifically here on Earth, the fact that in the extremely long history of life on the Earth, only one species has developed a civilization to the point of being capable of spaceflight and radio technology seems to lend more credence to the idea of technologically advanced civilization being a rare commodity in the universe. For example, the emergence of intelligence may have been an evolutionary accident. Jeffrey Miller proposes that human intelligence is the result of runaway sexual selection, which takes unpredictable directions. Steven Pinker, in his book, How the Mind Works, cautions that the idea that evolution of life, once it has reached a certain minimum complexity, is bound to produce intelligent beings, relies on the fallacy of the, quote, ladder of evolution, end quote. As evolution does not strive for a goal but just happens, it uses the adaptation most useful for a given ecological niche, and the fact that, on Earth, this led to language-capable sentience only once so far may suggest that this adaptation is only rarely a good choice, and hence by no means a sure endpoint of the evolution of a tree of life. Another theory along these lines is that even if the conditions needed for life might be common in the universe, that the formation of life itself, a complex array of molecules that are capable simultaneously of reproduction, the creation of extraction of all base components that it uses to build itself from the environment, and of obtaining energy in a form that it can use to maintain the reaction or the initial abiogenesis on a potential life-bearing planet might ultimately be very rare even if worlds that might have the proper initial conditions for life might be common. It is also possible that intelligence is common but industrial civilization is not. For example, the rise of industrialism on Earth was driven by the presence of convenient energy sources such as fossil fuels. If such energy sources are rare or non-existent elsewhere, then it may be far more difficult for an intelligent race to advance technologically to the point where we could communicate with them. There may also be other unique factors on which our civilization is dependent. Insofar as the rare earth hypothesis privileges earth life and its process of formation, it is a variant of the anthropic principle. The variant of the anthropic principle states the universe seems uniquely suited towards developing human intelligence.
this philosophical stance opposes not only mediocrity but the copernican principle more generally which suggests there is no privileged location in the universe it is also opposed by increasing evidence that humans are not the only intelligent language tool using making species or however else you define the concept on our planet opponents dismiss both rare earth and the anthropic principle as tautological if a condition must exist in the universe for human life to arise then the universe must already meet that condition as human life exists and as an unimaginative argument according to this analysis the rare earth hypothesis confuses a description of how life on earth arose with a uniform conclusion of how life must arise while the probability of the specific conditions on earth being widely replicated is low we do not know what complex life may require in order to evolve section four point one point two it is the nature of intelligent life to destroy itself detailed information about this section can be found in the wikipedia main article titled doomsday argument technological civilizations may usually or invariably destroy themselves before or shortly after developing radio or spaceflight technology possible means of annihilation include nuclear war biological warfare or accidental contamination nanotechnological catastrophe ill-advised physics experiments or a Malthusian catastrophe after the deterioration of a planet's ecosphere. This general theme is explored both in fiction and in mainstream scientific theorizing. Indeed, there are probabilistic arguments which suggest that humanity's end may occur sooner rather than later. In 1966, Sagan and Shklovsky suggested that technological civilizations will either tend to destroy themselves within a century of developing interstellar communicative capability or master their self-destructive tendencies and survive for billion-year timescales. Self-annihilation may also be viewed in terms of thermodynamics. In so far as life is an ordered system that can sustain itself against the tendency to disorder, the, quote, external transmission, end quote, or interstellar communicative phase may be the point at which the system becomes unstable and self-destructs. From a Darwinian perspective, self-destruction would be a paradoxical outcome of evolutionary success. The evolutionary psychology that developed during the competition for scarce resources over the course of human evolution has left the species subject to aggressive, instinctual drives. These compel humanity to consume resources, increase longevity, and to reproduce, in part, the very motives that led to the development of technological society. It seems likely that intelligent extraterrestrial life would evolve similarly and thus face the same possibility of self-destruction. And yet, for species self-destruction to provide a good answer to Fermi's question, it would have to be very nearly universal. That is, this possibility would have a probability of very nearly one. It has been suggested that a successful alien species would be a super-predator, as is Homo sapiens. This argument does not require the civilization to entirely self-destruct, only to become once again non-technological. In other ways, it could persist and even thrive according to evolutionary standards, which postulates survival as the sole goal of life, not, quote, progress, end quote, technology, or even intelligence. Section 4.1.3 It is the nature of intelligent life to destroy others. Detailed information about this section can be found in the Wikipedia main articles titled Technological Singularity and Von Neumann Probe. Another possibility is that intelligent species beyond a certain point of technological capability will destroy other intelligence as it appears. The idea that someone or something is destroying intelligent life in the universe has been well explored in science fiction and the scientific literature. A species might undertake such extermination out of expansionist motives, paranoia, or simple aggression. In 1981, cosmologist Edward Harrison also pointed out that such behavior would be an act of prudence. An intelligent species that has overcome its own self-destructive tendencies might view any other species bent on galactic expansion as a kind of virus. 
the extermination of other civilizations might be carried out with self-replicating spacecraft under such a scenario even if a civilization that created such machines were to disappear the probes could outlive their creators destroying civilizations far into the future it is hard to imagine any intelligent species actually wanting to develop such probes as they are dangerous to the creators as well as to all other life furthermore if their aim is to colonize the galaxy first they can fulfill their aim simply by being the first to colonize as the colonization time for the galaxy is much less than the age of the galaxy if true this argument reduces the number of visible civilizations in two ways by destroying some civilizations and forcing the others to remain quiet under fear of discovery see section four point two point three they choose not to interact with us Section 4.1.4 .4. Human Beings Were Created Alone Religious and philosophical speculation about extraterrestrial intelligent life long predates the modern scientific inquiry into the subject. Some religious thinkers, including the Jewish rationalist commentator Rabbi Hasdai Kreska, born circa 1340, dying circa 1410 or 11, and the Christian philosopher Nicholas of Cusa, born 1401, died 1464, posited the possibility of such extraterrestrial intelligence. On the other hand, at least some strains within the various Western religious traditions suggest the uniqueness of human beings in the divine plan and would counsel against belief in intelligent life on other worlds. Religious reasons for doubting the existence of extraterrestrial intelligent life resemble some forms of the rare earth hypothesis. The argument here would be a teleological form of the strong anthropic principle. The universe was designed for the express purpose of creating human, and only human, intelligence. Section 4.2. They do exist, but we see no evidence. It may be that technological extraterrestrial civilizations exist, but that human beings cannot communicate with them because of various constraints problems of scale or of technology, because their nature is simply too alien for meaningful communication, or because human society refuses to admit to evidence of their presence. Section 4.2.1 Communication is impossible due to problems of scale. Detailed information about this section can be found in the Wikipedia main article titled Relativity of Simultaneity. Subsection 1 Intelligent civilizations are too far apart in space or time. It may be that non-colonizing, technologically capable, alien civilizations exist, but that they are simply too far apart for meaningful two-way communication. If two civilizations are separated by several thousand light-years, it is very possible that one or both cultures may become extinct before meaningful dialogue can be established. Human searches may be able to detect their existence, but communication will remain impossible because of distance. This problem might be ameliorated somewhat if contact communication is made through a bracewell probe. In this case, at least, one partner in the exchange may obtain meaningful information. Alternatively, a civilization may simply broadcast its knowledge and leave it to the receiver to make what they may of it. This is similar to the transmission of information from ancient civilizations to the present. The problem of distance is compounded by the fact that time scales affording a window of opportunity for detection or contact might be quite small. Advanced civilizations may periodically arise and fall throughout our galaxy, but this may be such a rare event, relatively speaking, that the odds of two or more such civilizations existing at the same time are low. There may have been intelligent civilizations in the galaxy before the emergence of intelligence on Earth, and there may be intelligent civilization after its extinction, but it is possible that human beings are the only intelligent civilization in existence now. The term now is somewhat complicated by the finite speed of light and the nature of space-time under relativity. Assuming that an extraterrestrial intelligence is not able to travel to our vicinity at faster than light speeds in order to detect an intelligence a thousand light years distant, that intelligence will need to have been active a thousand years ago. Strictly speaking, only the portions of the universe lying within the past light cone of Earth need to be considered, since any civilizations outside it could not be detected. 
there is a possibility that archaeological evidence of past civilizations may be detected through deep space observations, especially if they left behind large artifacts such as Dyson spheres, but this seems less likely than detecting the output of a thriving civilization. An image accompanies this subsection of the article with the caption, NASA's conception of the terrestrial planet finder. Is it possible alien civilizations are too far away for meaningful communication? Subsection 2. It is too expensive to spread physically throughout the galaxy. And detailed information about this section can be found in the Wikipedia main articles titled Project Daedalus, Project Orion Nuclear Propulsion, and Project Longshot. Many assumptions about the ability of an alien culture to colonize other stars are based on the idea that interstellar travel is technologically feasible. While the current understanding of physics rules out the possibility of faster-than-light travel, it appears that there are no major theoretical barriers to the construction of slow interstellar ships. This idea underlies the concept of the von Neumann probe and the Bracewell probe as evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence. It is possible, however, that present scientific knowledge cannot properly gauge the feasibility and cost of such interstellar colonization. Theoretical barriers may not yet be understood, and the cost of materials and energy for such ventures may be so high as to make it unlikely that any civilization could afford to attempt it. Even if interstellar travel and colonization are possible, they may be difficult, leading to a colonization model based on percolation theory. Colonization efforts may not occur as an unstoppable rush, but rather as an uneven tendency to percolate outwards, within an eventual slowing and termination of the effort given the enormous cost involved and the fact that colonies will inevitably develop a culture and civilization of their own. Colonization may thus occur in clusters, with large areas remaining uncolonized at any one time. A similar argument holds that interstellar physical travel may be possible, but is much more expensive than interstellar communication. Furthermore, to an advanced civilization, travel itself may be replaced by communication through mind uploading and similar technologies. Therefore, the first civilization may have physically explored or colonized the galaxy, but subsequent civilizations find it cheaper, faster, and easier to travel and get information through contacting existing civilizations rather than physically exploring or traveling themselves. In this scenario, since there is little or no physical travel and directed communications are hard to see except to the intended receiver, there could be many technical and interacting civilizations with few signs visible across interstellar distances. Subsection 3. Human beings have not been searching long enough. Humanity's ability to detect and comprehend intelligent extraterrestrial life has existed for only a very brief period, from 1937 onwards if the invention of the radio telescope is taken as a dividing line, and Homo sapiens is a geologically recent species. The whole period of modern human existence to date, about 200,000 years, is a very brief period on a cosmological scale, while radio transmissions have only been propagated since 1895. Thus it remains possible that human beings have neither been searching long enough to find other intelligences, nor been in existence long enough to be found. One million years ago there would have been no humans for any extraterrestrial emissaries to meet. For each further step back in time, there would have been increasingly fewer indications to such emissaries that intelligent life would develop on Earth. In a large and already ancient universe, a space-faring alien species may well have had many other more promising worlds to visit and revisit. Even if alien emissaries visited in more recent times, they may have been misinterpreted by early human cultures as supernatural entities, as proposed by Eric von Däniken. This hypothesis is more plausible if alien civilizations tend to stagnate or die out rather than expand. In addition, quote, the probability of a site never being visited, even with an infinite time limit, is a non-zero value, end quote. Thus, even if intelligent life expands elsewhere, it remains statistically possible that such terrestrial life might never be discovered. Section 4.2.2. Communication is impossible for technical reasons. Subsection 1. Human beings are not listening properly. 
There are some assumptions that underlie the SETI search programs that may cause searchers to miss signals that are present. For example, the radio searches to date would completely miss highly compressed data streams, which would be almost indistinguishable from white noise to anyone who did not understand the compression algorithm. Extraterrestrials might also use frequencies that scientists have decided are unlikely to carry signals, or do not penetrate our atmosphere, or use modulation strategies that are not being looked for. The signals might be at a data rate that is too fast for our electronics to handle. Simple broadcast techniques might be employed but sent from non-main sequence stars, which are searched with lower priority. Current programs assume that most alien life will be orbiting sun-like stars. The greatest problem is the sheer size of the radio search needed to look for signals, the limited amount of resources committed to SETI, and the sensitivity of modern instruments. SETI estimates, for instance, that with a radio telescope as sensitive as the Arecibo Observatory, Earth's television and radio broadcasts would only be detectable at distances up to 0.3 light years. Clearly, detecting an Earth-type civilization at great distances is difficult. A signal is much easier to detect if the signal energy is focused in either a narrow range of frequencies, narrow band transmissions, and or directed at a specific part of the sky. Such signals can be detected at ranges of hundreds to tens of thousands of light years distance. However, this means that detectors must be listening to an appropriate range of frequencies and be in that region of space to which the beam is being sent. Many SETI searches, starting with the venerable Project Cyclops, go so far as to assume that extraterrestrial civilizations will be broadcasting a deliberate signal, like their SIBO message, in order to be found. Thus, to detect alien civilizations through their radio emissions, Earth observers either need more sensitive instruments or must hope for fortuitous circumstances. That the broadband radio emissions of alien radio technology are much stronger than our own, that one of SETI's programs is listening to the correct frequencies from the right regions of space, or that aliens are sending focused transmissions such as the Arecibo message in our general direction. Another argument is based on the size of the galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is approximately 100,000 light years in diameter. Because there is no known ways of transmitting faster than light, it is possible that signals simply have yet to reach us, or have, but are too badly distorted to be recognized as anything but background noise. Subsection 2. Civilizations only broadcast detectable radio signals for a brief period of time. It may be that alien civilizations are detectable through their radio emissions for only a short time, reducing the likelihood of spotting them. There are two possibilities in this regard. Civilizations outgrow radio through technological advance, or, conversely, resource depletion cuts short the time in which a species broadcasts. The first idea that civilizations advance beyond radio is based in part on the fiber optic objection. The use of high power radio with low to medium gain, i.e. non-directional, antennas for long distance transmission is wasteful of spectrum, yet this waste is precisely what makes these systems conspicuous at interstellar distances. Humans are moving to directional or guided transmission channels such as electrical cables, optical fibers, narrow beam microwave and lasers, and conventional radio with non-directional antennas is increasingly reserved for low-power, short-range applications such as cell phones and Wi-Fi networks. These signals are far less detectable from space. Analog television developed in the mid-20th century contains strong carriers to aid reception and demodulation. Carriers are spectral lines that are very easily detected yet do not convey any information beyond their highly artificial nature. Nearly every SETI project is looking for carriers for just this reason, and UHF TV carriers are currently the most conspicuous and artificial signals from Earth that could be detected at interstellar distances. But advances in technology are replacing analog TV with digital television, which uses spectrum more efficiently, precisely by eliminating or reducing components such as carriers that make them so conspicuous. Using our own experience as an example, we could set the date of radio visibility for Earth as December 12, 1901, when Guglielmo Marconi sent radio signals from Cornwall, England to Newfoundland, Canada. 
Visibility is now ending, or at least becoming orders of magnitude more difficult, as analog TV is being phased out. And so, if our experience is typical, a civilization remains radio visible for approximately a hundred years. So a civilization may have been very visible from 1325 to 1483, but we were just not listening at that time. This is essentially the solution, quote, everyone is listening, no one is sending, end quote. More hypothetically, advanced alien civilizations evolve beyond broadcasting at all in the electromagnetic spectrum and communicate by principles of physics we don't yet understand. If stable wormholes could be created and used for communication, then interstellar broadcasts would become largely redundant. Thus it may be that other civilizations would only be detectable for a relatively short period of time between the discovery of radio and the switch to more efficient technologies. A different argument is that resource depletion will soon result in a decline in technological capability. Human civilization has been capable of interstellar radio communication for only a few decades and is already rapidly depleting fossil fuels and confronting possible problems such as peak oil. It may only be a few more decades before energy becomes too expensive and the necessary electronics and computers too difficult to manufacture for societies to continue the search. If the same conditions regarding energy supplies hold true for other civilizations, then radio technology may be a short-lived phenomenon. Unless two civilizations happen to be near each other and develop the ability to communicate at the same time, it would be virtually impossible for any civilization to talk to another. Critics of the resource depletion argument point out that an energy-consuming civilization is not dependent solely on fossil fuels. Alternate energy sources exist, such as solar power, which is renewable and has enormous potential relative to technical barriers. For depletion of fossil fuels to end the technological phase of a civilization, some form of technological regression would have to invariably occur, preventing the exploitation of renewable energy sources. Subsection 3. They tend to experience a technological singularity. Detailed information about this section can be found in the Wikipedia main articles titled Sentience Quotient and Matryoshka Brain. Another possibility is that technological civilizations invariably experience a technological singularity and attain a post-human or post-alien character. Theoretical civilizations of this sort may have altered drastically enough to render communication impossible. The intelligences of a post-singularity civilization might require more information exchange than is possible through interstellar communication, for example. Or perhaps any information humanity might provide would appear elementary and thus they do not try to communicate any more than human beings attempt to talk to ants. Even more extreme forms of post-singularity have been suggested, particularly in fiction. Beings that divest themselves of physical form, create massive artificial virtual environments, transfer themselves into these environments through mind transfer, and exist totally within virtual worlds, ignoring the external physical universe. Surprisingly early treatments, such as Lewis Paget's short story, Mimsy Where the Bora Goes, in 1943, suggest a migration of advanced beings out of the presently known physical universe into a different and presumably more agreeable alternative one. One version of this perspective, which makes predictions for future SETI findings of transcension fossils and includes a variation of the zoo hypothesis below, has been proposed by singularity scholar John Smart. Section 4.2.3. They choose not to interact with us. Subsection 1. Earth is purposely isolated. The zoo hypothesis. Detailed information about this section can be found in the Wikipedia main article titled Zoo Hypothesis. It is possible that the belief that alien races would communicate with a human species is a fallacy and that alien civilizations may not wish to communicate even if they have the technical ability. A particular reason that alien civilizations may choose not to communicate is the so-called zoo hypothesis. The idea that Earth is being monitored by advanced civilizations for study or is being preserved in an isolated, quote, zoo or wilderness area, end quote. 
Many other reasons that an alien race might avoid contact have been proposed. Aliens might only choose to allow contact once the human race has passed certain ethical, political, or technological standards. For example, ending poverty or war, or being able to master interstellar travel. They may not want to interfere with our natural, independent progress. The Earth may have been set as an explicit experiment that contact would ruin, or it may be felt that it is too dangerous to make contact for us or them. Perhaps advanced civilizations actively hide, not only from Earth, but from everyone else, since the galaxy is a dangerous place. These ideas are most plausible if there is a single alien civilization within contact range, or there is a homogeneous culture or law amongst alien civilization which dictates that the earth be shielded. If there is a plurality of alien cultures, however, this theory may break down under the uniformity of motive flaw. All it takes is a single culture or civilization to decide to act contrary to the imperative within our range of detection for it to be abrogated, and the probability of such a violation increases with the number of civilizations. This idea, and many others, become more plausible if we estimate that our galaxy has only a relatively small number of civilizations. A related idea is that the perceived universe is a simulated reality. The planetarium hypothesis holds that beings may have simulated a universe for us that appears to be empty of other life by design. The simulation argument by Bostrom holds that although such a simulation may contain other life, such life cannot be much in advance of us since a far more advanced civilization may be correspondingly hard to simulate. Subsection 2. They are too alien. Detailed information about this section can be found in the Wikipedia main article titled, Technological Singularity. Another possibility is that human theoreticians have underestimated how much alien life might differ from that on Earth. Alien psychologies may simply be too different to communicate with human beings and they are unable or unwilling to make the attempt. Human mathematics, language, tool use, and other concepts and communicative capacity may be parochial to Earth and not shared by other life. Subsection 3. They are non-technological. It is not clear that a civilization of intelligent beings must be technological. If an alien species does not develop technology because it is difficult in its environment, because it chooses not to, or for any other reason, it will be very hard for human beings to detect. Intelligence alone, as opposed to life, is not necessarily visible across interstellar distances. While there are various remote sensing techniques which could perhaps detect life-bearing planets, none of them has any ability to distinguish intelligent but non-technical life from non-intelligent life. Not even any theoretical methods for doing so have been proposed, short of an actual physical visit by an astronaut or probe. This is sometimes referred to as the algae versus alumni problem. Section 4.2.4 they are here unobserved. It may be that intelligent alien life forms not only exist, but are already present here on Earth. They are not detected because they do not wish it. Human beings are technically unable, or because societies refuse to admit to the evidence. It is possible that a life form technologically advanced enough to travel to Earth might also be sufficiently advanced to exist here undetected. In this view, the aliens have arrived on Earth or in our solar system and are observing the planet while concealing their presence. Observation could conceivably be conducted in a number of ways that would be very difficult to detect. For example, a complex system of microscopic monitoring devices constructed via molecular nanotechnology could be deployed on Earth and remain undetected, or sophisticated instruments could conduct passive monitoring from elsewhere. Many UFO researchers and watchers argue that society as a whole is unfairly biased against claims of alien abduction, sightings, and encounters, and as a result may not be fully receptive to claims of proof that aliens are visiting our planet. Others use complex conspiracy theories to allege that evidence of alien visits is being concealed from the public by political elites who seek to hide the true extent of contact between aliens and humans. Scenarios such as these have been depicted in popular culture for decades.
This theory was jokingly suggested to Fermi himself by his fellow physicist Leo Szilard, who suggested that, quote, they are already among us, but they call themselves Hungarians, end quote. 